So hi everyone, we are here with Christian Bone, who is a senior 3D generalist at Movie Picture Company. So Christian, you are the spotlight here. Talk to us about your journey career. You work for a motion graphics artist in a small company called Visualize, and now you are a CG artist in NPC. How was your career experience and your behind scenes story? Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me. It's interesting to, uh, to get to talk about these things sometimes. My career journey, it's a long one. I'm a 90s child, like born in, in 1990, the advent of the internet and all those kind of things. Early in my life, I was introduced to uh, the original Star Wars films, which like I was blown away by as a kid. I think it was five or six when I saw them the first time. Absolutely loved them. I wanted to be a Jedi Knight, of course. Great. And then you get a little bit older and you realize that, uh, that that's probably not going to happen. Uh, so you seek sort of other opportunities. And I had a good friend of mine back then, and we started to look a little bit into 3D softwares and whatever we could find, because back then YouTube, especially like in tutorials, hadn't really grabbed a hold yet. So yeah. it was a little bit difficult to, to actually like figure out the knowledge. I remember we bought one of these really, really huge books, like Bibles of 3D Studio Max, like how do you get started? How do you learn it? Obviously everything in English, I, I can't remember if I mentioned, but I, I'm from Denmark. So English is not my native oh. language. It was, <laughs> yeah, so that was, I mean, that was a part of the training as well that you have to like learn it through another language um and we we tried out a few things i remember we we sort of filmed ourselves fighting with wooden sticks in the backyard so we could put like lightsabers onto these things like rotoscoping and everything it was it was great fun but at the same time it was also as a career it was one of those things where it just didn't really seem like it was possible it's like that was something they did in hollywood right a um, like a dream yeah exactly exactly and it's not something you do especially in denmark where i was from there was it wasn't a career path so as i grew a little bit older i actually gave up on it i went more and more into music uh had a few years where that was actually what i wanted to do i tried to get into sort of audio production and, and mixing and building a little bit of a small business around that and that was until the point when I then realized that music is also a really, really difficult sort of career path. Like certainly you can get a little bit more education in that. And it's a little bit more, at least back in Denmark, it was a little bit more sort of widely uh, uh, used. Um, but I realized that that would, that would be really difficult as well. Now in these few years, um, we had a school back in Denmark called the animation workshop, which I, I knew about it, but it was a very classic animation school, like a lot of 2d, a lot of Pixar animation, which I still thought was cool, but it wasn't exactly like the, the VFX and, and that background that mm -hmm. I had I had interest in. Another thing about the school was that it's incredibly hard to get into. They expect an incredibly high level of drawing. And I, I didn't drew very well back then, at least. So I sort of just wrote that off. I was like, that's just not possible at all. The beginning of my 20s, and I was like, OK, well, this music thing, I had to let that go a little bit. And what am I going to be doing now? So I started I started an education in multimedia design. So getting a little bit into, into, like back into graphics and mm -hmm. at least doing a little bit of creative work that I could make a living from. I think this was where I had a, a rekindle for all of these uh, visual effects and animation again, because suddenly you, you get a little bit of an introduction to the ways of working and see that, okay, you can actually make, have a career that's at least like somewhat connected to this. So yeah, in, in the beginning of my twenties, I started the multimedia design, realizing, okay, you can actually do something that is related to creative work. And that's when, uh, as you, as you said, Stephanie, I started with Visualized. It's a small company back in Denmark. They used to do a lot of uh, banner commercials and that was how I got in. I got in as, actually as a freelance graphic designer at first, just designing banner commercials for websites and <laughs> stuff like that. And that was the first little intro to professional creative work that I had. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it was, it was tough work in the beginning. Like, you know, you, cause I hadn't done that much graphic work. It, it had been about a year, I think in school and, but I was really sort of hungry and ambitious to actually like get into it and start, you know, just earning a little bit on this. So it, it was a difficult start, but, but still kind of fun. And then slowly, little by little, starting to get into after effects and motion graphics, you know, you do the same graphic design, but you start making it move as well. And saw okay. that there was, there was a big potential in that, that there's, there's a lot of, especially around Denmark as well. If you want to do anything creative there, like motion graphics is a, is a big thing. Like all companies want to use it, you know, explainer videos or, uh, you know, anything like small commercials that they can do themselves in, on YouTube or Facebook and all that. So there was, there was a big market for it as a freelancer. I think when I got into that, that really sparked this whole idea that, hey, I can actually get into animation. 
I wanted to get, you know, going with the animation workshop. I decided, okay, okay. I'll put the work and the effort and try to actually learn to draw, uh, even though I know that's going to be a little bit of a fight, like an uphill struggle to get there. Um, but I'll try to do it. And it took me about three years. You have to make a, a big portfolio. Like every year when you apply, basically you get a, you get categories. They tell you to do about, I think, eight character designs, uh, a storyboard, like come up with a story, make a storyboard for it, uh, do environment designs. Uh, it's a freestyle category. I think it ends up with being like 40 original pieces of work you have to deliver for them. So how, much, how much effort, Christian? I mean, how much effort? You're talking about uh, five, five hours a day, 80 hours oh, yeah. a week. How much effort did you put into this? Like so, a full-time job? So here's, here's the thing about it. In the first portfolio I did uh, for the school, um, first of all, it didn't feel as much as effort because this was fun. Yeah. Like it was, it was challenging, but it was fun. So I didn't actually, that was, that was after work hours and after school hours back then. I was, I was just drawing as much as I could on weekends and probably about like those good four hours a day, right? And then on weekends, however long you could draw, right? So I did that first portfolio, but that, that didn't really get me anywhere because I, I just didn't have the, I didn't have a good base for the drawing, you know? And I got, the you good need, thing you was... You needed the knowledge. You needed the knowledge. I needed the, I needed the fundamental knowledge to actually get me anywhere. Yeah. And the, the good thing is that the animation workshop itself, it's, um, it, it gives you these, uh, it offers courses in classical drawing where you can, you can actually uh, come and semester, you can study for a semester at the school basically. And they will teach you con like classic constructive drawing, like all the fundamentals, the anatomy, the perspective, all the sort of building blocks that you need to just be like good, solid, you know, have a solid base as an artist. One of the things pop ups in this conversation yeah. is that you have to acquire the knowledge, the fundamentals, yes. we call them. So yeah. it means that there, there is a very small percentage of people around the world that can be genius enough to capture everything that surrounds them and become a great artist. I mean, the reality is that it's very important to have a teacher, to have goals, to have uh, procedures, to have that knowledge in order to advance in any career. So that's one of the reasons why we, when we speak to potential students, we tell them, listen, this is gonna give you the basic knowledge. Mm -hmm. Everything else is gonna depend on how much time you put into this, how much passion you put into this. And as you just mentioned, when, when yeah. you like something, it doesn't feel like working. It doesn't feel like effort. I mean, mm -hmm. It feels like, not that, not that you are playing, but you are enjoying what you're doing, right? Absolutely. Um, no, that's, it's, a, it's a great point because that was, that was exactly what I experienced when, when I had to. And I think that's why the animation workshop was, was putting a lot of effort on, on drawing. It's because it's one of the easiest way. If you want to do anything creative in, in film or in games or whatever as an artist, those fundamentals is where you start, or at least you, you should. If you miss them, it, it can it can be very, very difficult to yeah. sort of build up the, the skill set. And and yeah, when I made the my first portfolio, my first attempt, that was when I was missing it. And then I got the second try and the third third try, and that was when I really, really built up these skills and it made it made a world of a difference. Um okay. and it's and as I as I went through the animation workshop, it was a lot of what they focused on there had a really, really good teacher, a, a, a guy called Lawrence, um, Lawrence Marvitt, who taught us um, sort of to compose images in very, very simple graphic ways. Just like, you know, forget all the rendering, forget all the lighting, all the detailing, but just like look at this as black and white shapes. And if you can, you know, compose that, you can, you know, and you can guide the eye and you can communicate your, whatever you want that picture to feel like, when you then render it as something beautiful, it will have the effect it's supposed to. And that's something I've, I'm using it. I mean, now in my career more than ever, those lessons. Um, wow. I feel like the, it's interesting because the higher you go, I think in your career, the more you start pulling on a lot of this fundamental knowledge. If anybody would like to, to understand also, how did you get to the big company? I mean, how, yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. So basically the whole, the way that whole thing worked was now I was, you know, in animation school, did all the training, got all the courses, and then you start building a showreel. So you start doing all these exercises and you actually build a portfolio towards where would you like to work? So I started building a VFX portfolio. And during my second year, I applied for an internship. 
I, and I applied all over London, like to all companies I could, I could get to. And I got rejection upon rejection upon rejection. I even got a rejection from MPC themselves. They then returned about a few weeks later, I think. It was, it was one of those official internships they had that I had applied to. But they returned a couple of weeks later and they said, hey, I'm sorry you didn't get the internship, but if you're interested, we actually have like a very, very junior position that we can offer you. Uh, and I was like, over wow. the moon. I was over the moon. I was like, <laughs> wow. So I didn't get an internship, but you actually have a position that you can give me. And that was, in, uh, that was in compositing. And obviously, when you the first time you get into a company like this, like the very, very big ones, you will get an assistant role in what you do. But I, I had a little bit of this mindset of being like, okay, I'll, I'll go in and there's certain you know, assistant tasks and whatnot I'll have to do, but I'll, I'll do my best to at least try to do a shot for a film. Because I was still working on the films that MPC was working on, just as a very, very low role, obviously. I had a super good head of my department back then who was very, he was very adamant in sort of pushing everyone, like all the interns who got in, he wanted to push them on so they would learn more and actually get something into the movies. And I was lucky enough to, to get to actually composite a few, uh, a few shots for, for some of the movies, which was amazing. So I think fighting for that internship, really working to get just at least that base position. That was what sort of just set the, set the basis for being able to, to enter the industry full time. And how much time yeah. have you been there? So that first internship, that was about two months. Uh, then I had to return to school again, finish my last year. Mm -hmm. um, and that was when I then, cause this was, this was MPC film was the first company I worked for in London. And then I got, I got in touch with MPC advertising uh, the year later. Because one of, one of the things that I had about working in films, it was, it was absolutely amazing, uh, you know, obviously working on, on something really, really big that you get to see in the, in the cinema. But one thing there is about the film companies is that they're very departmentalized. So it's, it's great for some people if you really want to specialize, like if you really want to be an, an amazing lighter or an amazing uh, creature sculptor, then film is, is definitely for you. I had a little bit more of a generalist mindset. Like I love working on many, many different things. Mm -hmm. um, and I think also just a sort of a skill development thing, because you, you'll have to still, when you get into the industry, you'll have to develop, you know, constantly. And I really liked uh, the idea of being a generalist. And that was what MPC advertising was, was offering. They were like, we can give you a, a generalist role. And then I hadn't actually seen a lot of their work, but then when they showed their show reel, I was like, wow, like what you guys do is like basically like small, small, short film, Hollywood movies. I was yeah. like, that was, that's incredible. Cause when you think of advertising, you often think about like, you know, small TV commercials, mm -hmm. but MPC advertising do these huge, like very explorative brand films. Uh, for example, oh. like the, the Ridley Scott project, the Hennessy seven worlds with it, which is a three, I think three, four minute brand film, which is basically like a very expressionistic short film. So those things are absolutely amazing to get to work on. Um, and that's some of the stuff that I love there. Also related to the other artists that you learn from the other artists. And that's, yeah, yeah. that's a really good experience as well. I mean, that's for sure. As soon as you get into the industry and you realize like how much insane talent that's there when, when you get into these companies. And, and the good thing is I find a lot of artists to be very, very helpful. If you're open, like sometimes, you know, sometimes when you get into the studio, <laughs> people can seem to be really like hardworking and really into exactly what they're doing, just working away. But if you're just open and, and talkative and ask for some advice, I find people are usually just really nice and helpful in the industry. They are wow. helping. That's great. And that's, and that's something I think we, we all have to, to keep as we progress in the industry is that mm -hmm. you, you've got to, you got to stay open to always learn new things from others. You can't learn everything on your own. So, so learn as much from others as possible is, is a big thing. Stay open, stay curious. And, but also when you get a little bit further ahead, like help others, just like they yeah. help you, like yeah. give your, give your knowledge away. Cause not only is it, is it really nice and it's, it's awesome to see when, when people learn something from you, but it also cements your own, own knowledge, right? Like when you have to explain, uh, why you're doing certain things. Like, why are you lighting a shot a certain way? Well, you have to go back and like find a lot of that tradition, okay. like the, the fundamental knowledge, right? So you have yeah. to explain yeah. how you got there. Yeah, you have to put words in the ideas, yours and exactly. others. And that, that just complements everything else. And the why. There is something the I why. think we would like your take on this, uh, based yeah. on your experience and based on your path, which is pretty amazing. I mean, there's a lot of work and it's a lot of passion and, and not, not stopping 
on dreaming, uh, mm-hmm. which uh, is part of your life. Uh, what's your take on the value chain in the animation industry? Where is everybody? I mean, let, let's, let's just figure out we have someone uh, certified from a real engine. Mm-hmm. And then they want to, then they finish and they say, well, now what? I mean, mm-hmm. what are they going to do? Uh, what would be the path and what would be the different goals that they can just draw in the first page? Well, in, in terms of um, in terms of where you stand, like in higher ability, when when you yeah. when you've done your training, mm-hmm. I think mm, it's that's a tough question actually because <laughs> I think it's so in many industries, right? In most other industries, honestly, I think it comes so much down to okay, you went to a really good school, maybe high prestigious mm-hmm. school. You got a you got a, a good. Uh, well, mostly they probably don't even look at grade cards. They're just like, you went to Harvard or something. So now someone will give you a really good internship. Then you get that on your CV and then you step up to the next and the next. Of course, that's also true in our industry, but so much of it is really down to your showreel. It's really down to, you can have, you can have a lot of certificates and, and everything. And, and that's all great. It, it does prove something. But at the end of the day, it is what is the quality of the image you can produce or the art or, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in, in other disciplines like writing, uh, what scripts have you been writing? Uh, what have you, what have you contributed on uh, to with any film? But I think a really good supervisor in any company can always see, are you someone who are, who's incredibly good at making an image? Um, and that's, that's often what it comes down to. But again, it's like, you can, I think you can learn many of these things on your own, but still the, the fundamentals of what we do needs to come from somewhere. Um, so, so th- I mean, that's where education comes in, right? That's yeah, awesome. it's true. Um, but it is, I will say it can, it can be difficult to start out. It, it, it just, as I mentioned, it took a lot of rejections to get into the first one, but I think that's where, if you really, really want to do this, mm-hmm. you've got to just like power through that initial tough phase. And it's going to take some work and you might have to redo your showreel sometimes. Again, you can, you can often reach out to people and just ask, Hey, like if you find a really good artist, you're like, reach out to them be like, Hey, would you mind looking at my work and just tell me what you think about this? And that can often give really good pointers to like, what do you need to learn? What should you maybe take out of your reel? Uh, what should you upgrade in your portfolio to make it a little bit better? That first step is usually pretty difficult, but once you get the, the foot in the door, I, at least that's what I found. That's where it really starts rolling. Um, it's it's much easier once you've gotten the first opportunity. Exactly, exactly. Christian, why don't you talk to us about the Unreal Fellowship? How does it work? How did you get there? What did you get oh, out of it? Also, I want to know why you choose virtual production because mm-hmm. I have heard that it's like a new job coming up, you know, virtual production. So I want to know also that part of the story. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. So right now I'm in a complete honeymoon phase about virtual production. I absolutely love virtual production. Let me, let me try to start there. Like virtual production is completely new. It's something that sort of sprung up out of nowhere because obviously Unreal Engine is, well, it's, it's, not, like, it's not like it's that much of, of a new thing. I think it's more that it's gained fame recently Mm -hmm. because it has been around it has been around for a while it just hasn't been as fluent and it has hasn't been as defined as what it is now um so unreal engine which is obviously a game engine Mm -hmm. has suddenly been employed by like a lot of studios um who have been starting to use it on what we've seen a lot is the led walls everyone everyone has seen them now like these awesome shots where now oh now you don't need a green screen and that thing in itself is absolutely uh, fantastic, you know, and, you know, cause now obviously when you're filming something, you can see it right there. And then you like the, the DP can react to what he films, the director can create, you know, create exactly the framing he wants the actors to know and, you know, can see the world they're in. So all that is, all that is great, but actually that is just a very tiny part of what virtual production is. So virtual production is essentially, it's essentially kind of animation and filmmaking coming together in, in, on a common ground where now you can interface into, for example, Unreal Engine with, with cameras, camera tracking. You can have your mo- mocap suits on and do your acting and you can go and place cameras, do framing, do environments, all this stuff in real time. 
which which is groundbreaking because what we're used to in animation is that you develop something and somebody has to to animate it and then you have to build a lot of things you look at it in sort of a gray shaded version for a long time it looks very basic <laughs> until you can then render it and then you can see it and then you put it together in an edit it's a very long slow oh, process God. it's not very creative it's not very reactive um so if you're a director on that you give a brief and then a couple of weeks later you get the first couple of tests or uh, uh, sequences back and then you react to it and i think for a lot of filmmakers that is incredibly difficult um, if you've worked in the industry, you get a little bit used to how that's how it is. Uh, like for me, for example, I, I've done a lot of lighting, so I've been used to the rendering process. You get used to it. But when you can all of a sudden sit and do, you know, um, you can, you can react in real time to what you're creating. That's just a completely different game. Yes. And I've been like, I've been getting into unreal on my own for probably the, the past year um getting really interested in it and then i have you know i applied for the year? fellowship and just a year chris yeah it's not more it's not more than a wow. year it's, it's not more than a year it doesn't it doesn't take long i think to actually gain skills in unreal i will say a lot of this is riding on the back of of course me being in the industry for a little bit so a lot of the skills you can carry over um but i then i then applied for the uh, for the fellowship um, mm -hmm. And then you get these like five weeks of super intense training <laughs> in Unreal, which yeah. uh, it's it's completely full time. First of all, um, mm -hmm. the really cool thing about it is that the fellowship will cover you. So if you because everyone are professionals, that's the thing about the fellowship. It, it's it's for professional. It's like if you've been you study, you have a few years and then this is your next step to actually learn uh, virtual production. And they uh, epic they they help you like they give you a grant so you can take time off of work to actually focus 100 percent because this is it's full time um you do it's 40 40 hours of studies pretty much and then you have one assignment which is make a short film what is what is incredibly cool about it is that at least in my term they're not just taking people from animation they're actually taking a lot of people who are directors or cinematographers or producers so you get a really good bunch of people and i think this is actually really important to what virtual production is because it is that sort of combination of people from different you know film industries coming together <laughs> it's so cool to stop study along with people from traditional like film backgrounds Okay, great. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's 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 see what would be your message to all those people, those professionals, those kids, or those families that are just uh, immersed in a quite different ecosystem in Latin America, and they might be willing to get into this path and start connecting with uh, a different world and open different doors. Uh, to make an impact in their families. What would, you, what would be your advice? I would say that if you have a dream, and if you have a dream about like getting into, into animation, visual effects, filmmaking right now, I think you're in one of the luckiest situations uh, ever. Basically because of what the internet is. Because at the moment there's such, especially in our industry, there's such a de democratization of knowledge. Yeah. So you can get on YouTube or you can find courses you can pay for in so many different like levels, like, you know, really advanced, like several years of like learning paths or even shorter. So there's something for everyone. And I think if you really have a dream about it, like like now is a great time. Like the business is, uh, the business is kind of booming. Like so many series are coming out, so many video games are being made. I think there's room for a lot of people who wants to get in and it's, it's easier than ever to learn. I will say it takes effort. It definitely takes effort. You gotta want it. You gotta have a passion in it because it's not something. It's not something where you just like study like easily for a few years and then it's all great. Then you get a job. It does. It does take work. But if if you're up for it, all the knowledge is out there for you to get. And you can you can learn everything nowadays if you really want to. But yeah, thank you, thank you for being here and for giving all those words of inspiration because many students here in Latin America they need that push. To yeah. say yes. Absolutely, I uh, I think it's uh, I think it's it's really great what you guys are doing. Absolutely love talking about these things. So uh, so the pleasure is all mine. <laughs> well, Christian Jensen, thank you very much for this time. And people, I think uh, you have a very 
interesting uh, uh, and a small success story because I think we're gonna we're gonna hear more about Christian in the future. And we have a new friend in this industry, so uh, a new friend from Denmark, from Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Christian. Have a nice one. Bye bye. Thank bye, you very Christian. much. Talk Hi, to bye. you guys later. Thank you.